Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series figure to take a look at. Another 118th scale release as we have the Suski Tyrannus. And this one looks very cool. Again, you've got the nice window area there. Beautiful artwork here as always off to the right hand side. You've got the species name leading down over there. The scale there as well as the Beasts of the Mesozoic logo up there at the top. If we turn it to the side you can see again the Tyrannosaur series and again the species name. Same thing pretty much going on over here. Not a whole lot of difference and again up here on the top. But then here on the back you can basically see a very cool image of the figure as well as information on the species and a checklist for all of Wave 2. So let's pop this box open and check it out. So first of all, we've got the assembly instructions, something that's always, again, like I say, every single time I review one of these figures, it's very important to pay attention to this. If you are new to these figures, you really want to read this so you assemble it correctly and you don't damage your figure. On top of that, we've got ourselves the card, and you can see the card shows off the same artwork that we had seen on the front of the packaging, a gorgeous image there, and uh, you can see, again, just as beautiful, actually I would say even more beautiful because you have the full image than what we had seen on the front of the box. On top of that, we've also got a nice shot here on the back of the box of a little dino soy photography, some information on the species, and of course the Creative Beast website right there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love those cards. We've also got the base attachments as well as the alternate feet. I'm going to try to turn this a little bit so we don't knock those out. But you can see we have closed toe options and open toe options as far as the opposite feet, the replacement feet go. And you also have the connections for the base again. So you can put this little peg in the base and you can choose which of the two different types of connections you want to use for your base to connect to the dinosaur. And speaking of the base, we also have the base and the base looks quite nice. Pretty similar actually to the base that we had seen on the Proceratosaurus. It looks like it could be the same base, just a different color. We'll have to look into that here. And then our Suski Tyrannus itself. And it is absolutely awesome, just like I expected it to be. Straighten that leg out there. You can see again, definitely a really cool looking well, if we can get in a nice spot where we can see it a little better. But definitely a really cool looking figure. Very nice naturalistic paint scheme. Kind of similar to what we had seen on the Proceratosaurus, but definitely a little bit different at the same time. Very nice, very flashy, but again, very naturalistic overall. I've really been loving the paint schemes that have been chosen for the Tyrannosaurus series releases. So as always, let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at this right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see we have a really nice looking head sculpt. Also some very nice texturing to the skin. You can specifically see how nice that looks there in the palette area. But just the general head uh, of the dinosaur, the skull shape, everything looks really good. You can see we've got quite a bit of variation of color as we have some really nice dark tones here in the face. A dark blue kind of running through the palette, but you've also got like a black running down along the top of the head, leading down here into the lower jaw. But as you lead back, you can see the eye has a really cool kind of like a reddish brown color to it. Nice black pupil. You can also see a gloss coat there, making it have that very realistic shine to it. And we also have some more similar variations to what we see in the eye as far as the browns go, leading here in the lower jaw, coming up here. You can see a different tone of brown beginning to lead back right there, as well as a light tone, kind of like an off white there, leading there in through the uh, lower jaw. We, of course, have an articulated jaw. You can see the inside of the mouth sports a very nice realistic tone of color, nice gloss coat in there shining away as well, giving it that nice saliva-like look. We've got the teeth sculpted out, but they're all kind of like sculpted together. But again, just like the Pro Ceratosaurus, it's a really small figure. And uh, of course, you're going to expect those teeth to be pretty small. They definitely are. But they seem to be very nicely painted. Try if we can get the focus on those teeth on the inside of them out there. We can kind of see it a little better. You can see some of the teeth almost look like they're sculpted individually. But overall, again, they're very small teeth, but impressively well done when it comes to the paintwork aspect. And you can, again, see that jaw articulates very smoothly. 
Also similar to the Proceratosaurus that we had reviewed yesterday, you can see we begin to have a little bit of fluffy feathering here as you lead back into the top of the head here, leading back from the head into the neck. And uh, one thing that I noticed that's on this figure that I haven't seen really on any of these others is kind of like a metallic dry brushing. And that almost, I think in my opinion, is probably the attempt of giving it sort of an iridescence kind of a look. So I definitely dig that. I think that was a really cool idea. And overall, definitely helps to make the figure look very striking. And you'll see that as we move further through the course of the figure. As you begin to move down the course of the neck, you can see again, lots of variation of color. You have this white running along the upper part of the dinosaur. You've got a black here, but the black kind of mixes with some variations of browns there. You can also see that kind of reddish brown. And then more color as we lead down, you have kind of like almost like a creamy, like a peach sort of a color, as well as the white there moving along the underside of the throat. And you can absolutely see that kind of metallic shine there leading from here all the way down the throat again, kind of, like I said, trying to give it that iridescent sort of look. We do also have that variation of an alternate brown up here that's a little different than what we see down through the course of the neck. But as you begin to move down, you've got a nice area of articulation right here, which can go all over the place, totally swivel if you really want it to. Very smooth as far as that goes. And then you've also got a spot of articulation here as you reach the body, which can also swivel. And that allows you to have some really nice posability, nice displays for your dinosaur and really, really nice articulation in the neck area. As you move down into the body a little bit further, you continue to see that we have that really nice feather detail that we saw picking up there on the top of the head. You can see it increases in size once you reach the shoulder area. You can see it's a little finer in neck, definitely picking up in size as you lead into the shoulder. As you lead back down into the arm though, we definitely decrease again in size a little bit as far as the feathers go. You kind of have like some feathers leading off of the arm right there, but you can see as you lead down through the course of the arm, the hand as well sports the feathering that we see through the course of that arm. You've got a nice uh, look there for the nails. Again, very nice glossy black, very, very nicely painted. And you can see the palms of the hands are kind of almost like a mustard variation of color, which is pretty interesting. But this is sort of similar to the Proceratosaurus where it had the feathers on the hand and then the palms were painted just a different color for these, uh, for the palms of the hands on this figure. But as you lead back up, you again have more of that reddish brown variation here, more of the sort of white tone, more of that dry brushing as well. Again, that sort of iridescent sort of look that we have going on. I did forget actually to mention we do have the articulation of the shoulder as well as the elbow and the wrist. So you can move all of that around, get some very nice poses for it, and of course push the arms, in my opinion, in what I believe is a nice natural position. It's where I usually like to put the arms for my figures. But you also have an articulated joint here in the midsection as well. Not a whole lot as far as a range of movement for that area, but definitely helps to create more posability for the figure. You can see that we begin to pick up on this kind of almost like peach brown sort of a tone here. Runs down through the front of the thigh, but leads up here. And then you also have a variation of brown kind of spotting through that black area up there on the top of the figure. There is just a ton of color variation on this figure. And then as you lead back, you start to get kind of like a white striping in between here. You can see that as well it has again, that kind of uh, metallic shine to it. There's just a lot going on when it comes to the coloration right there. But as you lead down through the leg, you can kind of make out some muscle definition in the thigh, though it's not super visible. Same deal for the calf. You can see it, but it's not overly defined because of course it's completely coated in feathers. But as you lead down here into the leg, you can see again, we have a really nice appearance to the skin texture. Nice scoots running down the front of the foot down into the toes. Very nice skin texture in general, if my camera would focus on it. And uh, we also have kind of like a yellowish tone and then a brown that's been added to it to give it a little color variation. Nails are painted again with that nice glossy black, just like we had seen up there on the fingers. And again, you have the articulation of the hip, which works nicely. The knee, which is really stiff right now, not really moving too much. And then you've got two more spots as you move down, which help to give you 
again even more articulation and these areas can usually swivel and everything and of course you could pop the feet off to replace them with those other feet but as you move up into the tail you've also got one last spot of jointed articulation right here where you can move the tail all over the place and then the tail is a wire tail so you can bend it and pose it however you would like but as you lead out through the course of the tail you continue to have that kind of fine feathering and then as you lead out you've got a little area here of plumage out on the tail but not a whole lot it doesn't have like a massive amount of tail feathers or anything like you do see on like raptors and stuff but you can see the paintwork looks really nice the sculpt work looks really nice as you move through the entire figure you're really not going to see much difference over here on the other side because again it's a fully posable figure so you can basically just see that it's very precise very uh consistent with what we had seen on the initial side definitely another awesome figure and a really cool species that i don't think i had in my collection up until this point and then the base you can see kind of gives me like uh, a very nice forest setting you can see there's like kind of like uh, mossy greens and stuff especially all over the rocks i feel like they're just completely coated in a moss you've got some nice variation of color as you lead over here again giving us this little area of vegetation with different variations of greens you've got some more sticks and stuff and the log right there but like i said i believe it's the same base that we had for the proceratosaurus so uh yeah you can definitely see it's pretty darn yeah it definitely looks to be the same thing so it is the same base as the proceratosaurus just it's been painted differently now which gives it its own again individual look but it's a really nice base and i actually think i prefer these colors over the colors that we'd seen on the proceratosaurus base as always you can see the figure can stand freely without the base it doesn't need the base but it definitely helps it to look cooler as far as the size goes, you are looking at about the 8 inch or around 20 and a half centimeter range. And then for a height, about 3 and a half inches or 9 centimeters. But of course, that is uh, dependent on you and how you want to position the figure. You know, you could make it taller if you choose to. But for a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line. And you can see again... The figure is definitely on the smaller side, pretty much as you would expect for this species. And honestly, I don't feel like we need many comparisons this time around, so we'll only do one more here with the Guanlong, because you can see it's pretty much the same size as the Guanlong, which means it's about the same size as the Proceratosaurus. So a lot of these smaller Tyrannosaur figures are right there in the same similar size range, and you can definitely see that yet again here. So this brand new Beasts of the Mesozoic Tyrannosaur series, 118th scale Suski Tyrannus, is definitely another really cool figure. Overall, I would say it's probably one of the nicest ones to come along so far when it comes to the you know sculpt of course but the paint apps on top of everything and just generally the species choice because i don't have any figures as far as i can recall of this species in my collection and that is really cool that's definitely exciting because any day i can add a new species to my collection i am hyped for it and i think they did a great job on this as always it sports all the same articulation that you see on all of the other tyrannosaur series figures in this similar size range and one of the good things about these smaller figures like this is the articulation is even smoother than what you get on the larger figures. You have extraordinarily smooth articulation on these smaller ones. We've got again a very nice, very highly detailed sculpt. I expect no less from a Beasts of the Mesozoic figure. Very nice looking skin texture, nice feather detail. Just generally a great looking version of this species. And a pretty nice paint application because the paint application is yet again another one of those instances where we have that nice bit of flashiness to it but it's not overly flashy it's nothing that's out of the range of possibility for what i would expect to see on a species like this and especially when it comes to a feathered dinosaur i feel like the paint application looks honestly perfect so without question another fantastic release from the beasts of the mesozoic and definitely another figure i recommend picking up so if you are interested i will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this right now on the beasts of the mesozoic website so make sure you check that out go grab this awesome figure and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.